Welcome to another training video by Baseline Achieved. I'm Jason Grabowski and today I'm going to talk to you about the percent complete field in Microsoft Project. Now this field, the percent complete field, I think is one of the most misunderstood fields in the Microsoft Project application. What I find people incorrectly do with this field is, let's assume that you've got a engineer on your team and the engineer is making a systems engineer plan. Now you want to get kind of a feel for how much of the work is done. So what typically happens is the project manager comes up, talks to the engineer and says, hey, what percent complete are you on this task? The engineer comes back and says, I think I'm about 50% complete. Now, the project manager at that point there may go into Microsoft Project, into the percent complete field and put a 50 there. That is the incorrect way to use this field. So how should we do this? Well, let's jump into Microsoft Project and talk through this. Okay, so we've opened up Microsoft Project and now we're gonna talk through this percent complete field over here on our view. So first I've got a task, a simple, single task. I've got a start date of Monday, 8-13, 2018, and then it ends the following Friday, 8-24. We've got 10 day duration. We see it here on our Gantt chart. And right now I've got a few other fields here too. I've got the actual duration field shown and remaining duration. I've got this field called stop. And of course I've got the percent complete field there as well. So now let's talk through the normal process of what happens when we do a task update. Let's assume that this task here, we're asking that engineer, hey, how much percent, what's the percent complete of this uh, system engineering plan that you're working on? The engineer comes back and says, I am 50% done. The typical thing that I see happen when people use this field incorrectly is now they come in here and they put a 50. I've got 50% there. Now I've got a value inside my stop field. So let's expand this out a little bit so we see what that says. So when I put 50% there, we ended up getting some progress recorded on the task. That blue bar that got filled in is progress and it shows a stop date now of 817. So we recorded five actual days of duration. There's five days left on our 10 day task. So the percent complete field, what is, what is going on here is that it is a measure of the amount of the duration used. It is not, and I say again, it is not a measure of how much work has been accomplished in, a, in achieving the goal of that task. And in this case here, the task is to create a system engineering plan. We used 50% of our duration, not to be confused with completing 50% of the system engineering plan. The nuance is this, this date here, this stop date, and the actual duration and the remaining duration. If I change that percentage to 25%, now I've used 2.5 days of my duration and I've got 7.5 days remaining and my stop date is now 8.15.18 and progress has only been recorded up to halfway through Wednesday. So a date that we're going to usually compare this to, this stop field, is called the status date. So if you worked in Microsoft Project before and you've used the status date, the status date is kind of the date that we are recording progress through. It's, it's kind of the, the data date for the file, basically. If I submit a file to a customer, maybe to the government or some other contractor, there has to be some kind of common understanding of what date that project schedule is updated through. And in this case here, the status date is that date. So now when I set this status date for 8-17-2018, what I'm saying is that is the date that I've recorded all of my updates to. So let's add the status date line to our Gantt chart. I'm going to go into grid lines. I'm going to come down here to status date. I'm going to click on it, choose a line. And I like to use orange for the status date. And now that other line that's here, this green line, it actually happens to be the current date. The current date doesn't mean a whole lot when we're submitting files to customers because the current date changes it's relative to when I open the file. So I'm going to change that to no line and click OK. So now I've got the status date shown here. And if I change this date, maybe to 814, we see that the line moves. So this date is being set by what we pick on our status date field. So now I've got the status date here. So now what would normally happen when I'm updating my schedule, I want to record progress up to the status date. So I would go to this task, I'd click on the task ribbon, 
and then I can click mark on track. Now it says that I've got five days remaining, just like we would expect it to, because I've recorded progress all the way up to the status date. Progress doesn't go beyond the status date because we haven't, we're not past the status date. It is, as far as this schedule is concerned, it is 8-17-2018. If that's the case, then I have to have progress up to that date not beyond it because beyond it's the future the, the future doesn't exist right now so the stop date the stop date becomes important the stop date cannot be after the status date you can't have more progress recorded on our schedule beyond the status date that doesn't exist yet like i said that's in the future on the flip side we also don't want this date to be before the status date we want it to equal the status date or to be the last business day before the status date if we have the status date set as Saturday afternoon, 818, the status date moved to 818, but my stop date is still the last business day before the status date. So we're good. So now with this percent complete field, if I actually went in here and manually changed the value, if I put 25% there, now we see what, what I'm talking about here. The stop date became 815. We've only used 2.5 days of our duration. That progress line is not going up to the status date. So now we have a schedule that has what we would call a task that's not correctly statused. If you do a health check on a schedule like this, what we're gonna see, I'm gonna run Project X-Ray on it, and I see that I've got one task or milestone not updated to the status date. And that's the one task, if I clicked on it, Obviously, we have one task there, so it's non-compliant. If I come back and I now fix this and say mark on track, and I run my health check again, now I see that I have no tasks that are incorrectly statused. So hopefully in this lesson here, you see now percent complete is not a field that we use to measure what we would consider physical percent complete. And as luck has it, let me show you a strategy for recording that kind of progress. If I do want to ask the engineer what percent complete they are for the task, well, there is a field called physical percent complete. So use that field to record what we would call, you know, what, what percentage of your system engineering plan are you done with? That's where you put that value at. The percent complete field, I don't even show it in my schedules half the time because it is purely a measure of how much time has been used and how much time is remaining. In this case, I've used 50% of my time on a 10-day task, which means I've used five days, and I've got five days remaining. Don't confuse it with physical percent complete. So hopefully you got something out of this quick lesson here. Use the physical percent complete field to record that progress towards achieving the system engineering plan, and let the percent complete field, this field here, let Microsoft Project calculate the value that's gonna go there based on how many days you've used and how many days are remaining. So that's it. Nice, quick, down, and dirty. Hope you got something out of this lesson. If you like these videos here, go ahead and subscribe to, uh, to my YouTube channel. Thanks.